what I'm in the mood for? Some good old season one of SpongeBob. My last video recapping season one of SpongeBob covered the first 11 episodes, and now we're gonna tackle some more. I could give you a nice little introduction, but I don't think that's necessary. You know SpongeBob, you love SpongeBob, you want to take a nostalgic walk down memory lane, I want to take a nostalgic walk down memory lane, so let's just cut the pleasantries and get right to the point. However, really quick, I do want to say thank you so much for clicking on this video and checking out my channel. I appreciate you so much. If you aren't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do that. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, and I need your help to get there. Also, I'm going to start making an effort to kind of grow my social media in general, so do me a huge solid and follow me on Twitter and TikTok. You can find me on both platforms at Dusk Till Sean. I post random stuff on Twitter, and as far as TikTok goes, I've been uploading clips from my YouTube videos on there, but I'm starting to make original content for TikTok as well, and if you don't want to miss out, make sure to follow me there, and with that out of the way, let's just jump right into some good old Spongebob. Up first, we are going to look at the episode called Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. That theme song just gets me every time. It has that old school Adam West Batman vibe in my opinion, and I just love it. The beginning of this episode introduces Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy as young fit superheroes. Mermaid Man, fleet and forceful, with the ability to assemble and charge the creatures of the deep by the power of Neptune. Mermaid Man, with his young associate Barnacle Boy, fights for all creatures that live in the sea. However, we quickly learn that this is SpongeBob and Patrick watching the show as they're dressed up as their favorite superheroes. They go outside to fight crime and they stumble upon their arch enemy Reflecto, aka Squidward, who's sunbathing in his yard. You know what this means. Donuts. By the power of Neptune, Just then, a jellyfish floats by, and Squidward blows it away. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, aka Spongebob and Patrick, then fight Reflecto by putting up a tent to block the sun, thus cutting off his power. Squidward gets angry at them as they run and hide inside of Spongebob's house. Reflecto has found our secret lab. What would the real Mermaid Man do? Why don't you ask him yourself? Elaborate, you vile fiend. He and Barnacle Boy live in the retirement home on the other side of town. Hmm, they must be working undercover. Yeah, now please leave me alone. We see SpongeBob and Patrick go to the Shady Shoals nursery home in search of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. Excuse me, I know Mermaid Man is working undercover on an important case, but do you think we could see him? Undercover? Yeah, well, I'll see if they can take time from their busy schedule to see you. SpongeBob and Patrick are extremely excited to meet their heroes, but when Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy tell them that they're now retired, SpongeBob and Patrick get upset. SpongeBob says that they need to get out of retirement because there's evil afoot, and Mermaid Man's PTSD kicks in. There's evil afoot! SpongeBob and Patrick get kicked out of the retirement home for freaking out Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. SpongeBob gives a nice speech about how the world needs Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy and how he won't rest until they're out of retirement. To the meatloaf! To the broccoli! Make sure you give extra broccoli uh, to my young ward. The boy needs his vitamins. Here you go, son. <laughs> Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy go to their table to eat their lunch, and SpongeBob approaches them. He starts telling them a story from their past. Do you remember the time the food supply in Atlantis was running low? So you invented a ray gun that made things grow six times their size to shoot at the kelp gardens? But then, the evil man Ray swoops down and swipes the gun away and shoots all the algae. And he gloms onto the undersea dome. 
and he starts sucking on the glass. What's your point, kid? He says that they're the greatest heroes of all time and that they need to come out of retirement. Listen up, you villains. I want to eat my meatloaf. If you don't get out of here, then by the power invested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife. What is going on in here? You may kiss the bride. Did you reunite our heroes? No. But I'm married. We then see Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy rocking outside in their rocking chairs, while SpongeBob dresses up as a damsel in distress, and Patrick dresses up as a robber attempting to steal his purse. Why are you here to rescue little old me? Pipe down! You can wake Mermaid Man, and he's ornery when his nap is disturbed. Ever alert, Mermaid Man has trained himself to sleep with his eyes open. Confound it! Get away from him! Stop shouting and napping! It's not me, old coot! Yes, that's me. I'm over here. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy start to argue. Meanwhile, SpongeBob tells them that they decided to paint the invisible boatmobile, which pushes Barnacle Boy over the edge. He tells Mermaid Man that they need to come out of retirement immediately because there's evil afoot. You know what this means? Donut stall, brother. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, unite! The two superheroes decide to hit SpongeBob and Patrick with their water balls. When that fails, they dog paddle around them, forming the raging whirlpool. When SpongeBob and Patrick enjoy all of that, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy have no other choice than to summon the creatures of the deep. Sea creatures unite! <laughs> The creatures of the deep seem to have lost some of their luster. The creatures of the deep attack, and they grab SpongeBob and Patrick and throw them off into the distance. I did it! I feel five years younger! Oh, it's good to be back! <laughs> we did it, you old coot! Who are you? We cut back to SpongeBob and Patrick at SpongeBob's house, watching a brand new episode of The Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy Show, which features them in the nursing home playing checkers. What is it, Chief? Uh, hello? 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 Oh, that phone is still broken. Uh, remind me to, to get that fixed. Remind you what? Remind me of what? Will our heroes ever get their phone fixed? Tune in next week and find out. Wow. That was even better than the old show. So thanks to you. I am so glad that this is the episode we started with. It's a truly iconic episode. This is the first time we ever see Mermaid Man at Barnacle Boy, who would continue to be recurring characters throughout the rest of the series. One of my favorite scenes in this episode is, without a doubt, the one where Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are going through the lunch line and getting food. I have a weakness for animated food, and this animated mashed potatoes, meatloaf, and broccoli just look absolutely scrumptious. I'll also point out that Mermaid Man sleeping with his eyes closed is just one of my favorite character traits. I'm pretty sure that we never actually see him do this again throughout the series, but the look on his face when he does it is just priceless. Combined with the events that happen directly after, with everyone fighting and whatnot, just classic Spongebob humor. As always, the big shining star in every episode is definitely that animation style. I hammered really hard on this subject last time we revisited Season 1, and I'm probably gonna do it again, because the animation is just straight up amazing. This episode is even better than I remember it being, to be honest. I have to give it a straight up 10 out of 10. We're coming strong right out of the gate, and this one's even more enjoyable nowadays than it was back when I was a kid. Now we're going to move on to the episode called Pickles. This episode is another truly iconic one. It begins with Squidward working the register at the Krusty Krab while a customer is being incredibly indecisive. Uh... Oh, I'll have a, uh, no. 
Oh, maybe... No. Hmm. I'll have... No. Oh, maybe... Are you planning on ordering today, sir? I'll have a... Krabby Patty. How original. And with extra onions. Daring today, aren't we? SpongeBob proceeds to flawlessly make the Krabby Patty with extra onions, which he calls a crying Johnny. Another order or two later, we see a massive fish approach the register to order food. Let me guess, Tiny, a small salad? I'll take a double, triple bossy deluxe on a raft, 4x4 four four animal style, extra shingles with a shimmy and a squeeze, light axle grease, make it cry, burn it, and let it swim. We serve food here, sir. Thankfully, SpongeBob overheard the order and already has it prepared, but he's taken back when he recognizes the fish who placed the order. <gasps> Bubble pass. Yara! Square pants. I hear talk you make a mean Krabby Patty. Yep. I hear talk you're kind of picky. <laughs> yep. Well then, here you go. Bubble Bass takes the patty and proceeds to sit down and inspect the burger before he takes his first bite. When he bites into it, Spongebob comes to see what Bubble Bass thinks of the burger. This is pretty good. Only one thing. You forgot the pickles! <gasps> no! The best there is? I don't think so. You lose. <laughs> Spongebob starts to panic at the idea of forgetting the pickles. He picks through the burger, confused, as he remembers putting the pickles exactly where they always go. Bubble Bass then approaches Mr. Krabs, asking for his refund of two bucks. I believe you owe me two bucks. Two bucks! Your guarantee. Oh, that, well, can we talk about this? No. How about a discount on restroom tokens? Afraid not. Oh, how's about a free glass of water? No, a dozen free glasses of water. I'll even put ice in it. No, come back. Oh, two dollars. Two dollars. No, no. Mr. Krabs very sadly passes over the two dollars as he cries his eyes out. Then his sights go on SpongeBob, who is positive that he put pickles on the Krabby Patty. Mr. Krabs throws SpongeBob back into the kitchen and tells him to get back to work. SpongeBob goes to make a Krabby Patty for a customer, but having been shaken up by Bubble Bass, his patty making skill goes right out the window. Mutter down, buttons up, down. Ah, where's the patty go? Pickles, ketchup, wait. The oh, bang, bang, I'm losing. Bun down, shoe, mustard, pan, bun now! Mr. Krabs comes up and tells SpongeBob to take the rest of the day off. Why don't you take the rest of the day off? Oh no, Mr. Krabs, who will make the Krabby Patties? Oh, don't worry about that. We got Squidward! Huh? What? SpongeBob's entire life seems to have been flipped upside down as he literally freaks out, thinking that the front door is missing, and asks Mr. Krabs to point him in the direction of his own house. We see SpongeBob at home as he fails to remember the correct order of a Krabby Patty. He decides to go and just get some rest. Oh yeah! It was mattress, SpongeBob, mattress, then sheets, pillow. Good night, Gary. Aw, oh, this isn't right. Good night, Gary. Wait, this isn't right either. Nope. Uh-uh. Negative. Come on, come on, get it right. SpongeBob literally spends the entire night trying to find the right place to sleep instead of actually sleeping. He's so confused that he even forgets how to turn off his alarm clock. Alarm clock. How do I turn this thing off? Thank you. Meanwhile, back at the Krusty Krab, things aren't going too well as Squidward is burning patties, fries, and even milkshakes. Mr. Krab says that he has to get SpongeBob back as he heads out to SpongeBob's house. SpongeBob! SpongeBob! Mr. Krabs, hello. Do you how do? Why are you talking funny, lad? I uh, anything can't do right since because pickles. Nonsense. You'll be back making crappy patties like your old self in no time. I think don't ready back to go to work, Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs says that he's going to help SpongeBob get things back in order and help him remember how to make a crappy patty again. 
so you can make me more money. Uh, I mean, uh, putties. <laughs> I how do that? It's like riding a bike. You never forget. Uh, uh, I'm going to help you. Mr. Krabs believes that if SpongeBob can remember how to make a Krabby Patty, it'll put his whole life back in order. Mr. Krabs sits down with SpongeBob and a mat covered in all the fixins for a Krabby Patty. The two sit there for literally days while SpongeBob tries to figure it out. I finally realized that I can't do it! I can't do it, Mr. Krabs! I'm a failure! Don't talk like that! Don't you get it, you crustaceous cheapskate? I can't make a double Krabby Patty with the work. I can't put a patty on a bun with lettuce, cheese, onions, tomatoes, ketchup, mustard, pickles, and top bun together in that order. It's time. With his confidence restored, SpongeBob goes back to work and kicks Squidward out of the kitchen. Everyone realizes SpongeBob is back and they start lining up. I hear Square Pants is back. I'm right here, Bubble Bass. I thought I ran you out of town. <laughs> this is where I belong. Bubble Bass orders the regular, and SpongeBob already has it prepared, pickles and all. Bubble Bass takes a huge bite of the burger, and this happens. No pickles! See? Yeah. Yeah. However, when Bubble Bass starts to laugh, SpongeBob realizes that he's been hiding the pickles under his tongue the whole time. And there's the pickles from last time, too! And there's my car keys! And there's my ride! <laughs> The episode ends with everyone cheering for Spongebob, while Bubble Bass runs for the hills. Now, hip hip! Hooray! And three cheers for the fry cook who took my place while I was gone! Squidward! Hip hip! Oh. Hip hip! Oh. Hip hip! Oh. Hip hip! Boo! You stink! There's just so much to love about this episode. Bubble Bass is a character that I feel like should have been utilized more throughout this series. There are episodes where we see him appear, but they seem to be more cameos than actually having anything to do with him as a character relating to the story. First of all, the sequence where Mr. Krabs goes to SpongeBob's house and everything's all messed up is just hilarious. I love how they have the music playing backwards and his underwear's on his head. Everything about it is just off and messed up, and I honestly just love it. Also, that bit with Spongebob's bike being in a pot on the stove is just awesome. That right there is just classic season 1 Spongebob humor. However, I was a little disappointed that it was an actual bicycle and not Spongebob's unicycle, but that's beside the point here. I also can't bring up this episode and not dissect Bubble Bass's order. So check this out, he gets a double triple bossy deluxe on a raft 4x4 animal style extra shingles with a shimmy and a squeeze, light axle grease, make it cry, burn it, and let it swim. Now. Let's just take a moment to look at each portion of this burger. I did some research online and tried to kind of narrow it down what this actually is. So double triple means six patties total. Bossy means that he wants all beef patties. Deluxe means with everything. On a raft means that he wants it on Texas toast instead of buns. 4x4 four four means four times the current patties and cheese slices, which would equal to a grand total of 24 patties. Animal style means the patties should be cooked with mustard, pickles, green onions, and additional sauce. Extra shingles means extra toast. With a shimmy and a squeeze means jelly and butter on the toast. Light axle grease means that he wants it lightly buttered. Make it cry means extra onions. Burn it means that the patties are well done. And let it swim means either to go or with extra sauce. This is just hilarious because if this was a real thing, it would be gigantic. It would be so tall and it would just be a gigantic mess. This burger kind of sounds like something you'd see on Roll for Sandwich on TikTok. Shout out to Adventures in Ardia on TikTok. His Roll for Sandwich series is absolutely amazing. As far as the episode goes though, I kind of wish that they animated it close to what the real thing would be instead of just looking like a regular Krabby Patty. And I also got to bring up Mr. Krabs' money back guarantee on the sign. 
plane. Of course, it's just microscopic, way too small to be seen, because, you know, why wouldn't it be? All in all, this is just an amazing episode. I gotta give it another 10 out of 10. This one checked nearly every box that qualifies an amazing episode. Following that episode, we're gonna look at another fan favorite in the episode known as Hall Monitor. This episode starts out at Mrs. Puff's boating school, with most students sleeping or just kind of zoning out in general. Mrs. Puff then announces that it's time to announce the hall monitor of the day, but she starts to panic when she realizes that it's Spongebob's turn to be the hall monitor. Uh, Tina, you're the hall monitor. Hey, I've done it three times already! B uh, B Beth, she graduated! Henry! Vera! Clayton! Mrs. Puff very reluctantly announces Spongebob as the hall monitor of the day as he literally shoots up and flies to the front of the class. Mrs. Puff tries to give him the hat and the belt for the hall monitor uniform and Spongebob declines, saying that he has to give his speech first. Classmates, who am I to deserve such a great honor? Why, I would be nothing without Mrs. Puff. Give me a break. And to my public, all I can say is... I'm touched. SpongeBob then proceeds to spend six hours straight giving a completely pointless speech instead of doing his actual hall monitor duties. When he finally wraps up his speech, this happens. I will put on this uniform and assume my duties as... Hall monitor! Wish me luck, Mrs. Puff. Oh, and I will be... Hey! SpongeBob! Are you okay? I overdid the speech again, didn't I? I'm afraid so. That comment right there is our indication that this isn't the first time that this has happened to SpongeBob. SpongeBob slumps, walking away, feeling defeated, but Mrs. Puff offers to let SpongeBob wear the uniform until tomorrow. Ah! Thanks, Mrs. Puff! What are the consequences of what I've just done? Oh. oh. We see Spongebob walking down the street when he comes across a broken traffic signal causing a traffic jam. Spongebob rationalizes to himself that just because he's left school doesn't mean that his hall monitor duties need to end. Looks like a job for the hall monitor! You know, judging based on that sequence, you would think that everything went well and all the vehicles got through with no problem, but afterwards, we find out that Spongebob just caused a massive pileup from directing traffic. Moving on from there, Spongebob walks down the road when he comes across a house with an open window. He sees a couple inside eating at their dinner table. Fools, they've left themselves susceptible to danger. I must show them the error of their ways through example. After thoroughly burglarizing that poor couple's house, Spongebob heads back down the road where he comes across a puddle of strawberry ice cream on the ground. Patrick? 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 My ice cream! It's alive! <laughs> Spongebob tells Patrick that he's committed a crime and that he's gonna have to take him in. Just then, as Spongebob is writing in his notepad, a paperboy comes by and gives Spongebob and Patrick a newspaper with a headline about a maniac on the loose in Bikini Bottom. Spongebob says that this sounds like a job for the Hall Monitor, as he decides to investigate. Spongebob decides to take matters into his own hands and start the investigation. Who better to bring this maniac to justice than me? The Hall Monitor! But I can't handle this case alone. Patrick, are you ready to give up your life of crime? I want to be good! <laughs> hmm. Now you just need a symbol of authority. Perfect. The pair decide to begin their investigation by getting ice cream cones, twice, but when that yields no results, Spongebob decides to try something different. We've got to do something else, something with walkie talkies! <laughs> and now, duty calls! After Spongebob runs off, two actual police officers pull up and they decide to talk to Patrick. Afternoon, son. Hello, brothers. 
Son, we're looking for the maniac. Have you seen this man? <gasps> it's the maniac! Take him away! Take him away! The cops tell Patrick to stay indoors and to take that cone off of his head as they laugh, pulling away. Following that interaction, Patrick immediately radios SpongeBob to tell him that he's scared and that he wants to go home. SpongeBob tells Patrick to turn on his siren and that he'll be right there as night falls like a ton of bricks. <gasps> wee -woo, wee -woo, wee -woo. SpongeBob! I see him! Where is he, Patrick? At the intersection of Conch and Coral. That's where I am! Patrick proceeds to tell SpongeBob exactly where the maniac is going, as SpongeBob panics, thinking that he's being chased by the maniac everywhere he goes. Say again, deputy? The maniac's in the mailbox! <laughs> SpongeBob then runs through Bikini Bottom, demolishing houses as he sprints right through them, wearing the mailbox as a suit of heavy-duty armor. As he lays down, he catches a glimpse of a wanted poster, which is when he realizes that he himself is the maniac. I'm the maniac! <laughs> We'll take that as a confession. SpongeBob SquarePants, there you are. I turn my back on you for one minute and you destroy half the city. You should be ashamed of yourself. You know this guy? Of course I do. I'm the one who gave him the uniform in the first place. He's my responsibility. Oh. We then cut to the end of the episode where we see Spongebob in class learning from Mrs. Puff via video feed directly from the jail. And Spongebob? Yes, Mrs. Puff? I'd like to see you after class. Six months from now. This episode is one that I really feel mixed about. When I was a kid, Spongebob's behavior drove me nuts. Back then, it really annoyed me seeing him get the hat and belt and basically assuming the role of a police officer based on that. But I gotta say, watching this episode back as an adult, I just have a newfound love for it. Spongebob behaving the way he did after getting the hat and belt is really just so on brand and par for the course that I just can't be mad at him for it. It just makes sense that he would pretend to be a cop. I also found it hilarious how Patrick was so gung-ho about this investigation when him and Spongebob split up. Then, within two minutes, Patrick is in tears and wants to go home without even having taken a single step from the spot he was in when Spongebob left him. I really love how early on in the series, Patrick was just always so happy to help, but also so helpless himself in many ways. Sometimes, Patrick knows it all and can teach you about how putting on airs is just fancy talk, and how if you want to be fancy, you just gotta put up your pinky, but other times, like, in this episode, he's just confused, scared, and wants to go home. I also really love the animation of old season 1 Patrick, especially compared to the newer seasons or the Patrick Star Show. All in all, great episode, we're gonna give it a 9 out of 10, it's just great, and what more could possibly be said? Next up in release order is gonna be the episode Jellyfish Jam. This episode starts out in Jellyfish Fields. Ah, Jellyfish Fields. Here we find Spongebob once again stalking the wild jellyfish. Is Spongebob? Hello? Spongebob? <laughs> He's supposed to be here somewhere. Aha! Safety first. We see Spongebob break free from his rock form as he takes his freshly caught jellyfish and starts milking it like a cow to put the jelly on a piece of toast that he's pulled out of nowhere. There is nothing better than the taste of natural jelly from a jellyfish. <laughs> See you later! The jellyfish proceeds to follow Spongebob incessantly. Spongebob tries to deny the jellyfish, telling it that it needs to stay here in jellyfish fields, but it refuses to be left behind, and Spongebob pretty quickly caves and lets the jellyfish come home with him to be his pet. Squidward, look at my new pet! That's no pet, that's a wild animal! No he isn't! Watch this! Fetch! How many fingers am I holding up? Play dead! I wouldn't let 
SpongeBob party for 12 hours straight. At one point, SpongeBob decides that it's time for bed, so he turns off the music and tries to take the jellyfish up to his room. The jellyfish refuses at first, but SpongeBob ends up putting the leash on him and forcing him up to bed. SpongeBob ties the jellyfish to his bed frame, but in the middle of the night, the pet jellyfish slips out of his leash and lets a ton of other jellyfish in. Good morning, jellyfish. Jellyfish? Jellyfish? Here, jellyfish! Oh, jelly! SpongeBob runs downstairs to find his living room full of partying jellyfish. He tries to tell them that the party is over and that they've overstayed their welcome, but they keep messing with SpongeBob as they refuse to stop partying. Squidward decides to try to play his clarinet as loud as he can out his window, which angers the jellyfish and makes them attack Spongebob. Squidward, would it be possible to play your clarinet a little better? I don't think the jellyfish like it. The jellyfish don't like... What? Why, sure, pal. I can play better. Okay, he said he'll play better. The jellyfish all attack Squidward violently, and afterwards, he trudges his way over to Spongebob's house, as he tells Spongebob that he won't be hearing from him for a while, and he gives Spongebob his clarinet. The jellyfish swim by, taking the clarinet, breaking it in half, and ritualistically dancing around its burning remains. This sends Spongebob over the edge, and he grabs his stereo and tries to run outside with it as the jellyfish fight him. In the process, Spongebob's stereo ends up breaking, and the jellyfish react by attacking him. SpongeBob sits cowering in fear on the roof of his house, and in the midst of the madness, Gary starts clacking his eyes together, making a beat which seems to calm down the jellyfish. SpongeBob picks up Gary and carries him out of the house and down the street as the jellyfish follow him. As SpongeBob continues down the street with Gary making his beat, all of the other undersea life joins in to form a song. After luring the jellyfish back to jellyfish fields, SpongeBob runs home while they're distracted. Today, SpongeBob has learned one of the sea's harshest lessons. Wild animals can throw very wild parties. Ah. Oh, I felt that. This episode is one that I can truly look back on fondly. Growing up, I was a huge sucker for that whole sequence with SpongeBob's living room rave. The different colors, the animation, the music, it all just blends together so well to make a sequence that's just so unique and I dig it so much. I think I brought this up in the last video about SpongeBob, but I really love the animation style of Jellyfish Fields in the first season. This episode is such a good example of just how beautiful the animation can be as seen through that whole music sequence with Spongebob leading the jellyfish back to jellyfish fields. This episode is also a good life lesson as well. You should be wary of taking home a wild animal as a pet. It can very quickly get out of hand as seen in this episode where the jellyfish basically took over Spongebob's house. All in all, this episode was great. The song that played during that little montage at the end was pretty catchy as well. Overall, I feel like they wrapped things up in a pretty good Manner. I really gotta give it up to the animation on this episode. The animation is just truly unique, and for the time, it really stood out among the other episodes of Spongebob that we had seen up at this point. This episode deserves a pretty firm 8 out of 10. It was a solid episode, and the animation definitely brings it to the next level. Moving on from there, we're going to check out the episode known as Sandy's Rocket. This one starts out with Spongebob going to Sandy's house. He knocks on the door and Sandy proceeds to emerge from a hole in the ground in a massive rocket ship. She invites Spongebob on the ship to check it out and she explains that she's going to use the rocket to go to the moon. The moon! Can I go? No way, Spongebob! Especially after your little mishap with my whirly bird. Besides, there's not enough room for you. But I don't take up that much space. See? 
I can fit in here. Mmm, cozy. Sandy explains that this trip isn't for fun, it's for science. But SpongeBob begs until Sandy agrees that SpongeBob can stay in the cargo hold. Y'all can ride in the cargo hold if you just. Yeah! Going to the moon. Moon ride. Moon ride. Moon ride. But this time, just don't touch anything, okay? We see Sandy preparing supplies as she tries out a gun that she plans to use to collect moon rocks. SpongeBob suggests that they use the gun for some good old fashioned alien hunting, but Sandy quickly kills his vibe as she explains that there are no aliens on the moon because they don't exist. Sandy, Sandy, Sandy. How can you be so naive? There's evidence all around us. How do you explain Atlantis, Cowlix, 99 cent stores? And how about those mysterious circles that pop up in kelp fields overnight? Ah, there's one now! Sandy tells SpongeBob to go home and get some rest before their trip and to leave behind the alien nonsense. We see SpongeBob in the middle of the night, struggling to sleep as he's just too excited for his trip to the moon when Patrick comes up to his window to talk to him. Boom. Oh, hurry up! This ought to do the trick. Hiya, SpongeBob! What is it, Patrick? Can't you see I'm sleeping here? Well, I know you're going on that moon trip tomorrow, and I just wanted to bring you some. A present? No. Uh, SpongeBob? Is Sandy's rocket alien proof? SpongeBob rolls over and sadly tells Patrick that Sandy says aliens aren't real, but his tone changes very quickly when Patrick shows him a can of alien repellent that he has. SpongeBob says that they better go spray the windows, and the two head off to break into Sandy's rocket. Wow! How do you think we get inside? We don't! We're just spraying the windows. I opened it, SpongeBob! Come on! In the control room of the spaceship, we see Patrick immediately start playing with a joystick, assuming that he's playing a video game. He then pulls a lever and ends up launching them out of the rocket. When they land back in, Patrick pushes a button on a panel that makes the whole rocket start to shake. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, I think this one starts it! Patrick, what are you doing? I'm the space traveler here, and I happen to know that that particular button is right over here. You started the rocket! SpongeBob. SpongeBob and Patrick panic as they fall towards the end of the rocket. However, once they reach the bottom, gravity goes away and they begin to gently float and have fun. <laughs> hey, SpongeBob, what's this? Hey, you got your toothpaste in my peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> The rocket circles the moon a few times before flying back down to Bikini Bottom. Meanwhile, we see Sandy with a jetpack as she flies to the moon to get SpongeBob and Patrick. The rocket crash lands in Bikini Bottom, and SpongeBob and Patrick exit, thinking that they're in space. Hey, look, it's Gary! Hey, come here, Gary, Gary! Wait! Don't go near him, Patrick. Can't you see this is all a trick? The aliens are projecting our memories onto the environment. You're trying to confuse us, Patrick. So you mean to say they've taken what we thought we think and make us think we thought our thoughts we've been thinking our thoughts we think we thought? I think? Okay. SpongeBob bags Gary, and Patrick tells him that Sandy would be proud, which is when SpongeBob realizes that Sandy is going to be pissed that they stole the rocket, but he hopes that she's going to feel foolish when he brings back an actual alien. SpongeBob then adopts the mindset of the more the merrier. Alien hunting! Alien hunting! Shh, Patrick! Don't let them know we're onto them. Uh, yeah, alien hunting. I saw that on TV too. Gee, Patrick, let's drop in on our old pal Squidward and see what he's up to. Make sure your gun is bumped. The two break into Squidward's house, thinking that this is all some kind of alien mirage. They begin to analyze what they believe is an alien specimen while it's sleeping. Wait, what's that? I think I'm gonna be sick. Patrick, do you know what this thing is? Stinky. No, it's an egg sac. Let's look at the embryo. Twins. Twins. 
Squidward rolls over in his sleep and his tentacle suction cups to Patrick's face window on his helmet. The same exact thing happens to Spongebob and next thing you know the two are pulling on all of Squidward's tentacles, causing him to wake up. Squidward panics and runs as he realizes that Spongebob and Patrick are trying to shoot him. They end up catching him and as they walk him out of his house, this happens. <laughs> Up a bit late to be playing pirate, aren't ye? Oh, 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 wait! Oh, don't shoot! Okay, okay, shoot me, but, but don't take me money! We don't want your money, Moon Man. <laughs> SpongeBob and Patrick start to load up their rocket with what they believe are aliens and they head off to bag some more. We see a montage of them capturing Mrs. Puff, Flats, a random stranger, and even Larry. When just about everyone in Bikini Bottom is captured, Sandy finally shows up. SpongeBob, what are y'all doing? I can't turn my back on you for two seconds without you causing a whole mess of trouble. Why look at you, bagging up all your friends and neighbors just like they was a fresh crop of hickory smoked sausages. You done turned my little science experiment into a disaster. You two ought to be ashamed of yourself. Sandy realizes that they think that they're catching aliens. She tries to tell them that they're not on the moon and that they're still in Bikini Bottom, but they don't want to hear any of it. Just goes to show you, you can't trust anyone. So, you were an alien all the time, and you didn't even tell me. I didn't even know. Yeah, well I got you now. Oh, but it's not you that's got me, it's me that's got me. After Patrick is bagged up too, Spongebob gets into the rocket ship and starts to head back to what he thinks is Bikini Bottom. Wow, Bikini Bottom sure looks different. Uh-oh. Spongebob, we aliens would like a word with you. This episode is one that really gives me mixed feelings. On a production standpoint, it is fantastic. The animation, the sound effects, the aesthetic, all in all, it's a great episode, specifically from a production standpoint. I really liked how they animated the interior of the rocket ship. The whole sequence of Patrick playing around inside like it was an arcade was very on point for the character and just hilarious overall. I also need to take a moment to show some love for the animation of early Sandy. There's another episode coming up here in the next video in this series that also does a great job on the animation of Sandy, but this one really does a great job of showcasing the animation style of early Sandy. I really don't want this to sound dumb because I just can't think of the right word to describe it, but I really feel like the animation of early Sandy was kind of nitty gritty and rustic. I love it. The early episodes with Sandy just have a specific type of feel to them that just lands really well in my opinion. I also appreciated the little plot twist at the end where we learned that Patrick was an alien the whole time too. Honestly, this episode leans a lot into the whole generalized tropes of alien movies and I really appreciate it. As someone who is a fan of alien movies, be it more dark and serious like The Thing or Alien, or even more lighthearted and comedic alien movies like Men in Black, I really appreciate this episode. I gotta give it a 7 out of 10 though. It's a great episode, but Spongebob just kind of annoyed me a bit in this episode. Spongebob has a recurring character trait where you give him an inch and he takes a mile, as we saw in the episode Hall Monitor where Mrs. Puff gave him the Hall Monitor uniform and next thing you know he's impersonating a police officer. This episode is similar in that regard. Sandy invites Spongebob to go on the trip to the moon and next thing you know he's a full-blown alien hunter. Sometimes that's a funny character trait to embrace and other times it just gets to be a little much, honestly. Still though, it's a great episode and you know, 7 out of 10 is still a good score, so hey, there's that. Next up is going to be another truly iconic episode, Squeaky Boots. This episode starts out at Mr. Krabs' house where he's singing his daughter Pearl a song for her birthday. When the song is a swing and a miss, Pearl requests that they open presents next. Oh, you shouldn't have. What is it, Daddy? It wouldn't be those totally hip new flipper slippers all my friends are wearing, would it? Everyone wants them. Yeah, uh, it might be. Wee! Oh, you shouldn't have! Yay, you shouldn't have! I mean, Dad. 
You really shouldn't have! Pearl is absolutely humiliated when her dad gives her a pair of black rubber fishing boots that he claims to have gotten on a bargain. We cut to Mr. Krabs sitting in his office wondering what he's gonna do with the boots, saying that he spent a whole two dollars on them. SpongeBob walks in asking for his paycheck, and Mr. Krabs takes this as the perfect opportunity to try to sell SpongeBob the boots. I want to get paid! Uh, sir, I can't see you. The boots? I mean, the way. In the way? These boots never leave my sight! Mr. Krabs tells Spongebob that the boots were owned by the most famous fry cook in the world, which makes Spongebob want them, but Mr. Krabs declines, saying that they're far too valuable for him to give them to Spongebob. Mm. I know! What if I give you my Krusty Krab paycheck? Uh, uh, paycheck? You got a deal! And what if I paint the Krusty Krab for free? You got a deal! And I'll throw in a year's supply of French fry oil! You got a deal! on there, lad! You're gonna give me a heart attack! Oh, you got yourself a deal. After Mr. Krabs finally agrees to give SpongeBob the boots, SpongeBob wears them absolutely everywhere, which drives Squidward nuts. <laughs> Later that night, we see Mr. Krabs in bed, trying to fall asleep, when he's haunted by visions of the boots squeaking. Mr. Krabs wakes up to realize that his window is open and the wind is blowing it, causing it to make a squeaking sound, similar to the boots, so he gets up to close it. After fighting with the window for a few minutes, Mr. Krabs walks back to his hammock, breaks another leg, and gets tied up in the hammock as the window swings open again as he's left tied up listening to the squeaking all night. The next day, Mr. Krabs is walking to work. <sighs> that was the worst night I ever weathered. At least I'll have some peace and quiet at work. Thank it, Mr. Krabs. I'm taking my vacation now. What's wrong, Mr. Squidward? I can't take the world's greatest fry cook anymore. I'll see you in a week. Mr. Krabs jumps right into PTSD mode when SpongeBob walks up to him, still wearing the squeaky boots. SpongeBob proceeds to show Mr. Krabs all of the cool tricks that he can do now that he has the boots. Watch this, Mr. Krabs. Can I take your order? Yeah, I have the Krusty Special. Thank you, sir. I will squeak when it's ready. Could the greatest fry cook do that, Mr. Krabs? Hey, uh... uh and look at this, Mr. Krabs. <laughs> and this. 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 Mr. Krabs gets overwhelmed and runs to hide in his office. He tries dramatic measures to stop the sound of the squeak from coming through, but nothing works. That's when Mr. Krabs decides that it's time for the boots to go. We cut to SpongeBob's house where he's going to bed, still wearing the boots. After he falls asleep, Mr. Krabs climbs down from SpongeBob's diving board and he steals the boots. <laughs> Quiet money. Silence and money. Mr. Krabs! What is it, my boy? Oh, Mr. Krabs, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. SpongeBob cries dramatically to Mr. Krabs, saying that he lost the boots and that he let Mr. Krabs down. Mr. Krabs does his best to help SpongeBob feel better, but he isn't much help. I've got some, uh, some magic oven mitts. Ready for those blessed boots. Poor lad. Mr. Krabs feels so guilty about taking the boots that he jumps when a customer comes up to order food. Mr. Krabs goes to take his order, but unfortunately he isn't able to understand what they're saying. All Mr. Krabs can hear is the sound of those boots squeaking when the guy talks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't raise 
Mr. Krabs has a full-blown freakout and admits that he is the one who took the boots and that they're here in the Krusty Krab underneath the floorboards. Mr. Krabs lifts up the entire restaurant as he grabs the boots, deep fries them, and proceeds to eat them. The deed is done. Um, why did you eat my boots, Mr. Krabs? Because, lad, you didn't need them. It's not the boots, it's the bootie. Uh, 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 I mean, the person in the boots. Mr. Krabs decides to give Spongebob his paycheck and a bonus, which he quickly takes back, leaving Spongebob with just his paycheck. We then see Mr. Krabs and Pearl leaving for vacation in Mr. Krabs' boat as the episode ends. A long week away from Bikini Bottom is exactly what I need. Just me and my darling daughter Pearl. <laughs> Don't forget my new flipper slippers, Daddy. Darling, I won't. <laughs> Oh no. This is another episode that really gives me mixed emotions. It's iconic, let's just get that out of the way first. The boots and their squeak is incredibly iconic, and it's definitely one of the first things to come to mind when thinking about season one of SpongeBob. However, this episode affects me on a personal level. I remember being a kid and seeing the scene of Mr. Krabs freaking out, and it would just immediately make me panic. Like, as a kid, I felt like I was freaking out, just like Mr. Krabs was from watching the entire sequence of that scene. But in their defense, I'm pretty sure that was the intention of that scene, they did such a great job of portraying Mr. Krabs' sense of overwhelming guilt that it actually made me feel overwhelmed as a viewer. But that's really my only gripe with this episode. Other than that, it's an awesome episode. It's a good showcase of just how greedy Mr. Krabs can be, as seen by how he's freaking out about being stuck with some boots that he spent a whole two dollars on. This is also the first time in the series that we would see Pearl introduced, which would lead to a whole new slew of questions, the biggest one obviously being how did a crab come to be a sperm whale's father? However, we still to this day don't know the backstory behind how Mr. Krabs came to be her father. Looking at this episode on the whole though, it's genuinely a good episode. The feeling I got watching that scene of Mr. Krabs freaking out is just a byproduct of the animators doing a really good job with this episode. I've got to give it a solid 8 out of 10. Though it kind of stresses me out, I also kind of love that just to be honest. Moving right along from there, we're going to jump into the episode called Nature Pants. The entire premise of this one is just kind of weird in my opinion. It starts out with Spongebob working at the Krusty Krab, flipping patties, when a patty flies up into the air and turns into a jellyfish. Next thing you know, all of the patties turn into jellyfish. Spongebob floats his way out of the Krusty Krab and turns into a jellyfish, and we see Jellyfish Spongebob playing with all of the other jellyfish. Spongebob! Spongebob! <laughs> Wake up, boy! You're burning me money! <laughs> uh, Mr. Krabs, what do we do? Here, use this! After he nearly burns down the Krusty Krab, Mr. Krabs pulls Spongebob into his office to ask him what's going on. Spongebob tells Mr. Krabs that he's been thinking about giving up his cold industrial life and living a more natural and free life amongst the jellyfish. <laughs> Spongebob, you wouldn't last even one day in the wild. This is your natural habitat. This is your wide open range. These are your amber waves. And this, oh, this is your golden scepter with which you rule. SpongeBob leaves the Krusty Krab saying that he can last more than one day, and he says that he'll show Mr. Krabs as he throws his hat on the ground. We cut to SpongeBob outside of his house, giving some of his worldly possessions to Squidward and Patrick. Are, are, are you sure you want to give me this mayonnaise? It's all yours. But <laughs> these old phone books? All yours, old friend. Patrick, there is one more thing I want you to have. Oh! <gasps> oh! 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 Oh!
<laughs> Sandy walks up and asks what's going on, and SpongeBob tells her his master plan. Sandy basically tells SpongeBob that his idea is terrible, and he dismisses her, saying that he's gonna prove that he doesn't need all those possessions and a house to live. Maybe someday you'll wise up and join me. Goodbye. I won't be needing these. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Buzz, buzz, he took buzz. off his pants. I'll give him a week. I'll give him 11 minutes. SpongeBob arrives in Jellyfish Fields shouting about how he is home. He tries to interact with his fellow jellyfish, but he struggles to keep up with them, doesn't enjoy snacking on grass like they do, and is unable to communicate with them. Hello, I'm Jellybob, and you are? Ah, nice to meet you. SpongeBob ends up smelling some Krabby Patties, and he starts to follow the scent until he finds Patrick and Sandy having a picnic in Jellyfish Fields. Here, Patrick, have a Krabby Patty. There he is, Patrick. Say you're live. Why, thank you, Sandy. <laughs> I would love one. Take Patty. Too bad SpongeBob isn't here. These are his favorites. I sure wish he'd come home. Take. But I can't do it! Patrick pleads with SpongeBob to get him to come home, telling him that everyone misses him, but SpongeBob denies, claiming that he's happy here, and Sandy ends up having to drag away Patrick as he's crying. SpongeBob goes back to his fellow jellyfish, and he's trying to blend in. The jellyfish all scatter as we see Patrick approaching with a jellyfish net. <laughs> If I can't have you as a friend, I'm gonna make you a trophy! I even picked out this nice jar for you! Patrick, go home! I'm a jellyfish now! We then see Patrick chasing SpongeBob throughout jellyfish fields as SpongeBob tries to hide from him, but no matter where he goes, Patrick is still able to find him. SpongeBob ends up hiding inside of a jellyfish hive, which is too high for Patrick to reach. <laughs> Okay! So this is the way it's gonna be! I hope you're happy. Having eluded Patrick, SpongeBob ends up eating a ton of the jelly that's in the hive. As he's eating, a bunch of jellyfish show up, and they attack SpongeBob for A, eating their jelly, and B, being in their hive in the first place. SpongeBob runs away, being stung and attacked by the jellyfish. We fast forward to later that night, and we see SpongeBob in a dark cave, looking just miserable and struggling to fall asleep. Buzz. 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 <laughs> Hey! Ooh, I'm itchy! Itchy, why am I so itchy? Ah! Poison sea urchins! Oh, ow, itch, itch, ow, ow, ooh. Later on in the night, we see SpongeBob walking away from jellyfish fields and back into town as he cries. He walks past the Krusty Krab, Sandy's house, and his own house. What have I done? I had a great life and friends, and I gave all of that up! Welcome home, SpongeBob! SpongeBob apologizes to everyone and tells them that he made a terrible mistake. SpongeBob, do us all a favor. Don't mind if I do. Ta da! Uh... Okay, that's enough. Uh... Could we please stop this? Patrick Itchy! It is great to be home! And that's gonna be where this episode ends. This one is definitely one that's really just bizarre all in all in my opinion. It's hard for me to rationalize Spongebob's want to go live with the jellyfish. Like, I get that he's really into jellyfishing and he fantasizes about how simple their life must be when compared to his own, but I just don't understand the drive to want to actually live the life of a jellyfish. Like, in real life, hunters don't really have the drive to assume the life of an elk, do they? 
I'm not a hunter, so I wouldn't know, and of course I'm just looking too far into things, but I just can't help but point that out. Of course, for the sake of a children's cartoon, the overall plot of this episode makes for good TV, but trying to look at it from a logical standpoint just doesn't really make much sense. However, I will say that at least it came with a good moral to the story. That being, you should cherish the life that you have, and that grass is always greener on the other side. Sure, the idea of a wild and free life among the jellyfish sounded peaceful, like absolute bliss to SpongeBob, in his mind, but when actually presented with that situation, he was able to see just how horrible it was for him. Sure, that lifestyle is great for a jellyfish, because they're accustomed to it, and that's just their norm, but for Spongebob, this was definitely a negative experience. I gotta give praise to that dark cave sequence though. The way they animated Spongebob covered in jellyfish stings and covered in sea urchins in the dark. The animation in season 1 in general is just great like I've said many times now, but I really appreciate the darker scenes. It really adds to that nitty gritty hand drawn animation feel that season 1 of Spongebob had. All in all, we're gonna give this episode a solid 7 out of 10. The story wasn't perfect, but it's still a solid episode all things considered. Moving on from there, it's time we tackle the episode called Opposite Day. I personally love this episode. It starts out with morning at Squidward's house. Huh? Surprise! Happy birthday, Squidward! SpongeBob and Patrick have cake with Squidward, play pin the tail on the seahorse, and give him presents, then they leave. Squidward decides that he has had enough and that he's moving out of the neighborhood. He gets on the phone with a realtor who says she can sell his house in a heartbeat as long as it's not infested with nematodes or surrounded by troublesome neighbors. SpongeBob! No one will ever buy my house with him living next door. Whatever a good neighbor would do, he does the opposite. 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 The next morning, we see Spongebob getting startled awake by Squidward, who's practicing for his one-man band. Pet, Squidward, why are you playing that drum? Drum? What drum? This is just my wig case. See? <laughs> Come on, Spongebob! Tackle me! Squidward, you need bed rest. I'll keep you safe until you're well again. Squidward explains to Spongebob that today is the one day of the year where you get to act the opposite of how you normally do. He tells Spongebob that everyone knows about Opposite Day and that it's kind of like a game. I love... I mean, I hate Opposite Day. <laughs> I'm not ready! Spongebob runs inside and tells Gary that he's gonna crawl into bed and do nothing all day. The doorbell rings and Spongebob goes to answer the door. I hate company. Who's there? It's Patrick. Patrick, go away. I never want to see you again. <laughs> SpongeBob doesn't like me anymore. That's right. You're my worst enemy. <laughs> SpongeBob explains to Patrick that today is opposite day and that he's not being serious. Patrick has no idea what Opposite Day is, so Spongebob tells him that instead of doing what he normally does, today he's gonna do the opposite. Oh, let me try, let me try! Patrick, Patrick, breathe! <sighs> Spongebob decides that he's gonna show Patrick how to do it, and we get a nice little montage of Spongebob and Patrick being opposites. SpongeBob then invites Patrick to help him do some work around the house, and the two proceed to completely destroy SpongeBob's house in the spirit of Opposite Day. Meanwhile, back at Squidward's house, he's in the middle of packing up his stuff when he hears a commotion outside. He looks out his window to see Patrick and SpongeBob completely just destroying SpongeBob's house. 
Squidward decides that he needs to fix this mess if he wants to sell the house, so he gets to work on fixing SpongeBob's house. I don't get it. I made my house a mess, which was making it clean, which made Squidward clean my yard, but that really means he's messing it up. But the opposite of clean is filth, which means filth is clean. That means Squidward's really making my yard a wreck, but I'd normally wreck my own yard, which means Squidward's being the opposite of Squidward, which means he's SpongeBob. Da ha! I understand everything now. I must be the opposite of SpongeBob by being... Squidward. SpongeBob decides that now he needs to be the opposite of SpongeBob by being Squidward. Patrick joins in and decides that he wants to be Squidward too. Hey, I want to be opposite too. Yeah, finally, yahoo! I'm Squidward, I'm Squidward, 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 Squidward. Wait, it's not enough to look like Squidward to be opposite. You have to act like him too. Boy, oh boy, do I like playing the clarinet. I practice and practice all day long, but I never get any better. The two decide to run into Squidward's house. Squidward continues working on SpongeBob's house, not noticing when the realtor shows up to check out his house. SpongeBob lets the realtor in, and they start talking about the sale. It's funny, I pictured you being much taller. Yeah, everyone says that. Now, if you want the sale to go through, you've got to tell me all the positive things about your house. Positive things. Opposite day. I'd love to. The floor creaks, the roof leaks, there's a terrible draft. Oh. Well, you didn't mention that on the phone. Please let me finish. The winters are harsh. The summers are brutal. There's a wild man-eating clam in the backyard. SpongeBob proceeds to show the realtor around the house. They go to Squidward's gallery to show the realtor, and she remarks on how great the large portrait of Squidward as a farmer is. Oh my, this painting is very nice. Thank you! Who's that? I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Squidward. You're both Squidward? I'm Squidward. He's Squidward. We're, We're both, both Squidward. Squidward! While that's happening, Squidward finishes fixing SpongeBob's house, and when he turns around, he realizes that the realtor's here, and that SpongeBob and Patrick are probably harassing her. Get away from her! Oh, oh, I am so sorry, ma'am. I hope these two barnacle heads haven't harmed you in any way. Who are you? Why, I'm Squidward. <laughs> What kind of fool do you take me for? He's Squidward, he's Squidward, you're Squidward, I'm Squidward! Are there any other Squidwards I should know about? Meow. The realtor storms off angrily as Squidward begs her to sell his house. She refuses and leaves Squidward behind, stuck being neighbors with SpongeBob and Patrick. Happy, Happy opposite, opposite day, Squidward! Squidward. We, we hate you! you. Let me show you guys how much I hate you! Oh! Patrick, you ever feel that Squidward likes us too much? Happy opposite day! <laughs> That's where this episode ends, and in my opinion, this one comes together just really well. It's so whimsical and just overall hilarious. Seeing this as a kid made me and all of my friends embrace the idea of Opposite Day. After watching this episode, we would usually spend hours at a time trying to do things the opposite of how we normally would. I also really love the transition of SpongeBob and Patrick turning into Squidward. The way SpongeBob looks and talks is actually very on par for Squidward. However, Patrick is literally just his normal self with a piece of coral for her nose. It was just absolutely hilarious. I loved when the realtor comes in and tells SpongeBob that he he thought he would be taller, thinking that he's Squidward, and Spongebob just brushes past it saying everyone says that. And of course, I can't talk about this episode without bringing up Gary Squidward. Looking back at this one, I gotta say, this might be peak season 1 Spongebob humor. I'm kind of stoked to watch the rest of season 1 to see if any other episode can hold a torch to this one comedically. All in all, I love this episode, and going into this one, I didn't think it was gonna go this way, but I've gotta give this one a solid 10 out of 10. Watching this back with an adult mindset, I gotta say that I loved it. It's genuinely an iconic season one episode. Next up, we're gonna check out the episode Culture Shock. 
I gotta be honest with you guys, I am not researching these episodes before watching them. I'm just kind of going through the list and watching them as we move along here. This is the first episode that I can't remember just based off of the name, so I'm kind of hyped to jump into this one and see how much of it I can remember. This episode starts out at the Krusty Krab, which is absolutely empty. Squidward is enjoying a nice dance magazine while SpongeBob is wiping down tables. Mr. Krabs is overstanding by the newly constructed salad bar, which surprisingly is being marketed as free. This is about the point where it all came back to me and I remembered this episode. If a free salad bar doesn't bring in customers, what will? Squidward! Uh, uh, yes, sir. There's gonna be some changes around here! <gasps> a customer! Welcome to the Krusty Krab! SpongeBob, cater to his every whim. As SpongeBob attempts to take the customer's order, he says that all he wants is change for the payphone. SpongeBob gives him his change, and the guy tips a penny, which Mr. Krabs puts in his safe. Profits are way down this month. We need a gimmick to bring in customers. Do you lovers have any ideas? I've got one. A free pair of socks with every purchase. <clears throat> or maybe double patty midnight madness. Oh, 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 I know, I know, I know. How about Mouthful of Clams Day? Everyone who shows up with a mouthful of clams gets their free drink. Huh? Huh? Mr. Krabs says that he was thinking more along the lines of live entertainment. Squidward pipes up and says that they need to do a talent show. He lures in Mr. Krabs to agree by saying that he'll be bringing culture to this cultural wasteland, making a ton of money, and his daughter Pearl can perform and have her name up in lights. Little Pearly, a star? Up in clams, a talent show. I'm talented. I better call the folks. Squidward, you've got a deal. Make my little girl a star. We then cut to Squidward as he is on stage preparing for the show while Spongebob approaches and asks what time he is going on. Squidward asks what talent it is that Spongebob could possibly possess. Not even your parents would want to see that. Squidward says that the people want culture, not dancing bubbles. We fast forward to the night of the show, and the house is full of people eager to watch the show. Squidward gathers everyone up to give them a nice pep talk. Gather around, everyone. Chop, chop. Now, you may be thinking this is your one shot at the big time. Well, it's not. It's mine. SpongeBob comes up and asks Squidward to check out his routine as the amazing Mr. Absorbency. He proceeds to transfer water through different parts of his body, which leaves Squidward just very much so unimpressed. Please, Squidward, let me be in the show! I'll do anything! 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 So you really want to be in the show? Oh, yes! Okay, you get to mop up afterwards. Now will you stop bugging me? So... This is what it feels like. The big time. With this mop, I shape my destiny. We cut to Squidward on stage as he awkwardly introduces the talent show with some pretty plain and boring jokes. First up is Pearl, who does a very excitable cheer performance as she jumps around on stage, jostling the whole audience around and leaving Fred the Fish yelling about his leg. Next up is Gary, who delivers some poetry. <clears throat> Words. Following up Gary is the amazing Plankton, who uses prestidigitation to make a Krabby Patty disappear. As he tries to run out of the restaurant with the patty, Mr. Krab stops him dead in his track, and everyone boos Plankton as he walks out with his head held low. Next is the final act of the night, the incomparable Squidward. <laughs> The crowd ends up hating Squidward's act as they run to the free salad bar to grab tomatoes to throw at him. 
Mr. Krabs sees this as an opportunity to make a buck, so he starts charging people a dollar per tomato. Squidward angrily storms off stage as the audience is booing and chanting no talent. Hey Squidward, can I go on now? Yeah, show's over! The audience loves Spongebob and they start chanting that they want more. Squidward thinks that they're cheering for him so he jumps out from behind the curtain just for the cheers to stop. Squidward feels defeated due to the fact that Spongebob stole the show, as Mr. Krabs rolls up saying that he's gonna need a wheelbarrow for next week's show, and the episode ends with Spongebob's parents saying how proud they are that their son is a star. Okay, so the premise of this episode is just kind of odd in my opinion. Like, imagine if McDonald's had a quarter where profits were down, so they decided to put on a talent show where the staff shows off their skills. Like. Doesn't that just kind of sound awkward? I don't know, like, I see how Mr. Krabs was easily coaxed into the idea, but like, I'm not sure how he thought this would generate any revenue. Ultimately, it did generate revenue as people paid to throw tomatoes at Squidward, so I guess I'm wrong in my skepticism, but still, the point stands. It's just kind of strange. On a side note though, Squidward kind of was the star of the show in a way. Like, sure, everyone hated him, but he was the act that made Mr. Krabs the most money as he sold the tomatoes that everyone was throwing. All in all, this episode is kind of mid-tier. It had good parts to it, like Gary's poetry for example, and I will say that the animation during Squidward's dance routine that he did actually was pretty cool and very interesting, but all in all the episode is just kind of below average when compared to everything else that we've seen up to this point. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a 6 out of 10 and we're just gonna leave it at that and move on. We're going to finish off this video by checking out what might just be the greatest episode from season one. This is going to be the episode called Fun. This episode starts out at the Krusty Krab. Ah, lunchtime at the Krusty Krab. Everyone enjoying their Krabby Patties. Uh-huh, what's this? Can you spot him, Mr. Squidward? Down there, sir! Oh, there appears to be a Krabby Patty napping in progress. There can be only one culprit. Plankton! We see Plankton crossing the street with a Krabby Patty on his back. Back at the Krusty Krab, Squidward, SpongeBob, and Mr. Krabs are standing around as Squidward says that he got away. Perhaps not, Mr. Krabs. For it's SpongeBob SquarePants! We see Spongebob on the hunt for Plankton as he chases him through town. This confused me as the Chum Bucket is across the street from the Krusty Krab, so I don't know why Plankton would have to run through town, but regardless, we see Plankton dip into a magic shop for a disguise. Uh, have you seen a Krabby Patty? It's about this tall and... Wow, a magic shop. Are you a magician? One time, I saw this magician, and he took this thing, and he... Anyway... And then he told us, if you believe in yourself, and with a tiny pinch of magic, all your dreams can come true. Plankton pulls the patty off, saying that he can't take it. And after all these years, I thought I was the master of torture. But that, that just wasn't fair. Here, take the stupid patty. I don't want the secret recipe anyway. Plankton walks away feeling defeated, saying that his restaurant will never be as good as the Krusty Krab and that SpongeBob doesn't know what it's like to be a loser. SpongeBob tries to make Plankton feel better by telling him that he thinks he's a winner. What? What did you say? I said you're a loser! How does it feel to be the most hated thing in Bikini Bottom, Plankton? It hurts, doesn't it? I know! Everyone says that for running Plankton out, they're gonna make Spongebob Honorary Town Rookie of the Day. But he's a jolly good rookie! I bet if he had just one friend, he wouldn't be such a meanie.
We then cut to the chum bucket where there's a knock on the door. Plankton is expecting that maybe it's a customer, but when he opens the door he finds Spongebob standing there. Spongebob invites Plankton to come out and play with him, which confuses Plankton. Play with me. You know how to induce thermonuclear fusion? No, but I'd like to go jump- Karen tells Plankton that he can't let Spongebob leave and that he needs to befriend him so that when they get close he can take a Krabby Patty from him. Plankton then decides to go back to the door and he agrees to play with Spongebob. The two go to jellyfish fields and do some jellyfishing, which Plankton also just doesn't understand. Mm. What happens after we eat them? You don't eat them, you catch them like this. La 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 la, la 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 la, like that. And? Then you throw them back. But watch out for the stingers. Stingers? <laughs> All knees will bow to Plankton. Hail Plankton! I win! I win! <laughs> SpongeBob tries to tell Plankton that it's not about winning, it's about having fun. Plankton doesn't even know the meaning of the word fun, so he tries to explain it to Plankton via song. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere and anytime at all. Down here in the deep blue sea. F is for fire that burns down the whole town. Use for uranium bombs. N is for no survivors when you Plankton. Spongebob stops Plankton dead in his tracks and decides to show him how it's done. By the time Spongebob's done with him, Plankton has that nice tingly feeling inside and the two have a nice montage of them playing together and having fun. Mr. Krabs catches eye of Spongebob and Plankton spending time together which leaves him with a bad taste in his mouth. Back at the chum bucket, Karen is accusing Plankton of losing sight of the mission as he's doing nothing but talking about all the good times he had with Spongebob and even trying on a pair of Spongebob's pants. Meanwhile, back at the Krusty Krab, Mr. Krabs is accusing Spongebob of corroborating with the enemy. Spongebob tries to explain that Plankton has changed, but Mr. Krabs isn't having any of it. He's changed, I tell you! Sponge buddy! yoo -hoo. Plankton buddy, let's go. I forgot this is a no-friend zone. Spongebob, may I speak to you in private? You won't mind if I set this here, will ya? What's this all about, Mr. Krabs? He's a thief. Look at the lust in his eye. Mr. Krabs tries to get Plankton to steal the Krabby Patty, but Plankton seems to not be buying into it. SpongeBob decides that he's had enough of Mr. Krabs testing Plankton, so the two of them leave. Maybe the lad was right. Maybe Plankton's gone straight. And maybe scallops are fly out of my pants! Hang on there, laddie! I'm a coming! We cut over to the movie theater where SpongeBob and Plankton are enjoying some popcorn together when Bubble Bass comes up and sits on Plankton. I sure like sequels, Plankton. <laughs> hey, Bubble Bass, you're sitting on my friend. Hey, Bubble Bass! Thanks for that. Framed. Sure thing. This is one of those cameos I was talking about where we see Bubble Bass appear in the episode, but he's not really involved whatsoever in the story, he's just kind of there. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, Mr. Krabs appears, yelling from the control room of the theater. Listen up! Mr. Krabs? He's deceiving you! Reach into his pocket now and take what he's got! You too, boy! <gasps> Having found the snatched Krabby Patty, Spongebob is absolutely heartbroken. Plankton tries to defend himself by saying that he couldn't help it. But we sang the fun song! I think I'm gonna be sick. How long? How long what? How long were you planning on doing this? Tell me! <laughs> what? Alright, it's true! I tricked you to get the Krabby Patty! But then you showed me friendship! <laughs> and now I realize that's all I ever really wanted. Really? No, not really! Plankton coldly runs off through the screen with the patty. SpongeBob thinks that Plankton made it off and won, but Mr. Krabs explains that behind the screen is solid concrete. Mr. Krabs takes the patty, and the episode ends on a positive note. Now, let's go back to the Krusty Krab and have a fresh one on me! Aye, aye, Mr. Krabs! Well, maybe at a discount. 
This episode is one that is definitely one of the most iconic in my opinion. Really though, the most iconic part of this is the fun song itself. It's so catchy and it just flows well. If you watched this episode and didn't get that song stuck in your head the first time you saw it, then something's definitely wrong with you. I really hate to keep beating this dead horse, but I just love the animation style of this season of Spongebob. This episode is another amazing example with the fun song sequence as well as the dark movie theater scene. I just love the feeling of the old Spongebob animation. The show had a really different feeling back then and looking back at it with my nostalgia goggles just feels oh so good. I do gotta say I really appreciated the inclusion of Bubble Bass in this episode. Even though he didn't have anything to do with the story, I appreciated that they threw him in there. I don't think we ever saw Bubble Bass again after this episode, but I could totally be wrong. Pretty sure if we did, it was really later on in the series past the point of where I stopped watching. All in all though, this episode is incredibly enjoyable. I really like it. The overall premise and feeling was just amazing. I enjoyed the idea of Plankton turning a new leaf for a moment, but of course he just had the wool pulled over Spongebob's eyes. All in all, I've gotta give this episode a straight 10 out of 10. I feel like I'm being rather liberal with the 10s this time around, but what can I say? I'm a sucker for season one of Spongebob. It just really puts me in a good mood, and honestly, I really just hope that it does the same for you. But what do you think? Do you have a favorite episode from season one that I haven't talked about yet? Do you enjoy my recap and review of season one? Let me know in the comments down below. I always appreciate your guys' feedback. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like and give praise to the YouTube algorithm in hopes that it promotes this video to everyone else. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.